Welcome to Lecture 3 on the topic of Geographical Information Systems. This lecture is part of the subject Future Farming Technologies, AGR2 FFT. This is part of the Bachelor of Agriculture and Technology, a degree that is offered at both North Melbourne Inst Institute of Technology and Melbourne Polytechnic. Please visit our website www.nmit.edu.au for information on this course and other courses that we offer. Lecture 3, Student Learning Objective, is coupled with examining and evaluate different technologies such as graphical positioning systems information and sensing. GIS is a component of the GPS technology. So geof geographical information systems, or as it is sometimes called geospatial information studies, is abbreviated to GIS. It is a technology based on a computer system that is designed to capture, store, manipulate, analyse, manage, and present all types of geographical information. So what do we mean by geographical information? Well, geography refers to the study of the Earth that is any physical, cultural, feature or phenomena which is occurring on the Earth. Geography refers to where or the location of these features. So conceptually, GIS is a system that provides spatial data entry. The system allows management analysis and visual representation of this data. GIS outputs are directed by the purpose or the application of the information. So what this means is the GIS outputs can be very versatile and they are often application specific in their nature. There are several ways of potentially defining GIS. The Department of Environment lists the following. The ability to select detail by area or theme, link or merge data set with another, analyse spatial characteristics or features in an area, update data quickly and cheaply, and model data and access alternatives. Dr. Rock Tomlinson was a Canadian scientist who published a paper in 1962 on an introduction to the use of electronic computers in storage, computation, and assessment of natural and economic data for the evaluation of marginal lands. This paper started work on GIS, which was funded by the Government of Canada. This work resulted in a second publication in 1963, a feasibility report of computer mapping systems. This was based around the Agricultural Rehabilitation and Development Administration area. And again, these two papers, coupled together, were thought of as the birth of GIS. Tomlinson, as a result, is acknowledged as the father of GIS. There are a number of components of GIS and we will look at these in some detail in the following slides. The first is of information and information systems. The information in a GIS system is linked with geography. Information systems typically integrate, store, edit, analyse, share and display geographical information that enables decision making in some enterprise. GIS, GIS applications tools typically allow user-created searches, they analyse spatial information, they edit data in maps and present the re results of all these operations. The system provides the hardware and the software to tie the information of the geography together. An important part of the GIS, GIS system is the data management. This occurs via layers. That is, geographical data is stored as a layer. Each layer contains a feature, for example, a an aspect of topography or a fence, etc. All layers relate to information that is in the same location. Let us explore this more by looking at the image on the screen. This is an example of a GIS application of several layers. The forest cover layer is one of the layers used as a foundation layer and this is shown in a light green colour and is at the bottom. The topographical layer sits over this. Then there is a stream layer, 
then a layer showing boundaries, and then another layer showing roads. The order is very important as it, it indicates priority in the display and can be user directed. That is, the requirement for the map can direct what layers and what order the layers sit in. Note that the pond layer was located just below the stream layer so that a streamline can be seen overlaying one of the ponds. So let us look at image layers from a conceptual point of view. The image on the screen shows the concept of image layers. You will see in this example that the ortho photo is the bottom layer and the top layer indicates the administration areas, the purpose of the map. The other la layers are included as they aid the interpretation of the administrative data and some thought would have, been gone, would have gone into the order in which these layers are processed. Another form of data that is sometimes required is called attribute data. This is data that is not necessarily geographical data and not part of the original layered map, but can, in, in, um, can add important or interpretive information, thus aiding the purpose of the map. The image on the screen shows this concept. The term spatial data is used a lot in this topic. It means a measurement over an area. That area can be small or can be large. All geographical data, including maps, aerial photography and satellite images are spatial data. Another important term and concept used in mapping is that of scale. Scale is the ratio relationship between distance on the map and their corresponding distances of the Earth's surface. Scale may be indicated on the map as a ratio, a fraction, or as some kind of pictorial representation such as a, a bar scale. We were first introduced to datums in Lecture 2 in the GPS lecture. A datum is a model of the Earth that is used in mapping. The datum consists of a series of numbers that define the shape and the size. A datum is chosen to give the best possible fit to the true shape of the Earth. There are a number of datums in use. As the basis of all map projection, the idea that a two-dimensional representation is created from a three-dimensional shape. There are many possible datums that can be used in Australia. Where possible, try to match the one you used on your map to the GPS unit. For the map grid of Australia, always use GDA94. The image on the slide shows the Australian map grid, which shows the different datums and or AMG zone numbers used in the datums construction. Grid references are used in GIS. Grid references define the location on maps and they typically use the Cotation coordinates. For the map grid of Australia used in GIS, all X coordinates are eastings and all Y coordinates are northlings. Eastlings are always written before northlings. An example of these coordinates might look something like 335900 east by 58400000 north. This relates to an exact location in Australia. Raster and vector are two basic data structures for storing and manipulating images and graphics data on a computer. Major GIS and CAD, which stands for Computer Aided Design Software Packages, available, use these primarily based on one or two structures, either a raster or a vector based. Raster images come from in the form of individual pixels and each spatial location or resolution element has a pixel associated with the pixel value. This indicates an attribute such as a colour, evaluation or an ID number. This is shown on the image on the screen. Raster images are normally acquired by optical scanner, digital CCD camera and raster imaging devices. It enables spatial resolution and is determined by the resolution of the acquisition device and the quality of the original data source. Because a raster image has has to have pixels for a spatial location, it is strictly limited to how big a spatial area it can represent. 
When increasing the spatial resolutions by about two times, the total size of the two-dimensional raster image will increase by about four times because the number of pixels is doubled in both the X and the Y image. The same is true when a larger area is covered when using the same spatial resolution. Vectors data comes in the form of points and lines that are geometrically and mathematically associated. Points are stored using coordinates, for example a two-dimensional point is stored as an XY. Lines are stored as a series of point pairs with each pair representing a straight line segment, for example X1, Y1 and X2, Y2, indicating a line from X1, Y1 to X2, Y2. We looked at these um, briefly in the last lecture. In general, vector data structure produce smaller file sizes than raster images because a raster image needs space for all pixels, while only point coordinates are stored in the vector representation. This is particularly true in the case when the graphics or the image have large homogeneous regions and the boundaries and shapes are the primary interest. Because the size issue, vector data is easy, easier to handle, that is, on a computer because it has fewer data items and is more flexible so it can be adjusted to different scales easily. This makes vector data structure the apparent choice for most mapping GIS and CAD software packages. Also topographically among graphical objects or items are much easier to be represented in the vector form since a commonly shared edge can be easily defined according to its right and its left side polygons. On the other hand, this is almost impossible or very difficult to do with a pixel. The image on the slide may help you to understand these differences better. Let's start with the vector data. On the left hand side of this image in blue is an image of a, a lake that, is, that has been formed using vector data. Remember, vector data comes from points and lines. When you transcribe that information to the software, you get the image or the layer on the right hand side. If you then compare the same image of the, of the vector, you, which has used points and lines, now to the raster, which instead of using points and lines, uses pixels, you can quite, see, you can quite quickly see the differences. You can begin to understand how vector gives clearer images than the raster representation. So vector data is characterised by a series of connected lines. The point at which the two lines meet is called the node. The connection of point and line enables the three types of symbols to be digitally created. These symbols are point data, node, line data, polylines, and area data, polygons. You can think of area data also as spatial data. Each node is given an exact geographical coordinate, for example an easting and a northing. There are several advantages of using vectors. The data appears more map-like. Map generalization can be reduced by using more points to define polylines and polygons. At each point, represent a specific location complex analysis can then be performed, including network and proximity analysis. Data can be easily modified to represent changing conditions in the landscape. An attribute <coughs> data can be added to the features easily. There are of course disadvantages of vectors, otherwise you wouldn't use the other alternatives. The analysis of the continuous data cannot be performed. Data sets may be large and complex, and these algorithms can be very time consuming. The input of the data is time consuming. And for use in analysis, data must adhere to uh, topographical rules. For example, no overlap or overshots are allowed in this form of data. So raster data is represented by a grid of squares called pixels. Examples of raster data include satellite imagery, aerial photography and digital evolution models or DEM for short. Each pixel represents an example of the data. For example, a pixel, pixel within a DEM would contain the elevation. It is the 
it is only the pixel which contains a grid reference, not the feature represented of, in the image. There are several advantages of using raster data. The data is widely available through websites and aerial photography. Raster data is useful for performing continuous analysis. It is relatively easy to display in hard copy and or on the screen, and most importantly, it is quick to process. There are disadvantages of using raster data too. The attribute data cannot be attached to features. Images are not always anaesthetically pleasing, that is, they don't look good, and features are made up of a collection of pixels. Features cannot be modified, a real problem, and the ground resolution is depicted by a pixel, another problem. So, as there are advantages and disadvantages of both vector and raster data, it makes sense to use a combination of the two in your map layering. Examples of this data include aerial photographs, satellite images, digital maps from a variety of sources, and GPS coordinates. The image on the right shows you a mixed map, a mixed layered map. The first two images are um, derived from vector data, and the last two images before the real world is, is, is sourced from raster data. So this brings us to the end of this lecture. To summarise, I'd hope that you now understand the following. You can describe what a GIS is and its main features. You can list the information that is required for a GIS system to operate. You can list the components of a GIS system. Describe in detail what layering is and why it is used in GIS systems. And finally, describe the differences between raster and vector data. Understand the advantages and disadvantages of both of these systems and where they may be applied and where they may not be applied.